What's up, everybody? I'm blessed and free. Welcome back to another episode of DOC TV. If you guys are tuning in for the first time, man, on this channel, we talk about crime, corruption, jail, and everything in between those. I also like to bring people on for interviews. Usually it's over Zoom because I'm interviewing people in other states. But you guys know who this is. You've seen another interview with him in it before. Uh, we got Wayne back on to share some of his story because I'm sure a lot of people can relate to what this guy went through. And I think it's good for people to hear that because you can go through all that shit and change your life. And that's exactly what he did. So, man, what's up, bro? Nothing, man. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, uh, bro. Our first video dropped today. It seems to be doing pretty good. I'm happy about that. Yeah. Um, and again, thanks for having me back. Yeah, you know? man. So <laughs> the last time we talked, bro, you were telling me that your mom started smoking crack with this guy and you ended up coming to Florida. Yeah. Um, like I said, my I had that case pending with the attempted murder that was, shouldn't have been an attempted murder. And um, I still don't know to this day if my mom sent me down here because of that or because of the whole her crack problem. I think it was definitely a mixture of the two. So just to wrap that up with what happened with the case... Um, well, hold on one second. Okay. When you found out your mom was smoking crack, right? What did that do to you? Because I'm sure that had to have like it affected was, you. Well, I had already been through the hell of it before I found out she was smoking crack. I knew he was smoking crack, but it was my mom. So it was like, okay, he's smoking crack and she's with him. My, the guy that I told you, my older brother, he told me like two days before I left, he's like, you know, your mom's smoking that shit with him, right? I'm like... Nah, man, she ain't gonna be smoking that shit. And then it just all clicked. Like, she's, she's she is. It. Like, you know, she is smoking it with them. And uh, it all whirlwinded. Like, because she told him that he had to move out. And that was what started it. So he had to move out. And then my dad shows up the next day to get me. So by the time I found out she was smoking crack, I was on my way to Florida. And then, like I said, within a weekend, they sold the house. She, they, he had a heart attack because they were smoking so much crack. They got $40,000, I know, for the house. From what I heard, they bought almost all of that in crack, had it at the house. He had a heart attack. She called my dad and said, hey, I have all this crack in front of me. I have all this money. If you don't come get me, I'm going to smoke myself to death. And so my Damn, dad bro. went and got her. Like, and uh, But anyways, what I was saying to tie up the, the case she apparently went to court the the day I was supposed to go to court and told them that I had ran away and she didn't know where I was. Right. I didn't know about any of this. I found all this out later. When and she how came old down were here. you at this point? I was 14. Okay, so um, you didn't really know what was going on. I had no idea. I, didn't, I went and saw the, the, pro, the public defender and saw that I had been charged with that. And then a couple months later, I came to Florida. But in the meantime, like, my mom was taking me to the courthouse, like, once a week and trying to get me put away. Like, she would be like, just put him in detention somewhere, you know. I'm like, because I was skipping school and not, not just misbehaving. And they kept telling her, like, ma'am, he didn't do, commit any crimes. We're not, we can't just put him in detention like that and take so him. So were you, like, skipping school and all that shit because when uh, you're at home, you didn't really have nobody telling you what to do? I... I was skipping school just because I wanted to hang out with all the other guys in the neighborhood, and I hated school, you know, I, just school was <laughs> terrible. And the school that I went to, it's it shut down now, like, it was, it was just a really bad school. Like I said, we were beefing with the other neighborhood, so it was having a fight every day, or, you know, getting jumped, or, the reason it was why just I, ridiculous. The reason why I'm asking these questions is because... My mom, too, did drugs, and, you know, I was in school and all that shit was going on. I mean, she was more alcoholic at this point, Yeah. but it affected me, bro, because I was always embarrassed to bring my friends around, you know, her, because I didn't want them to see how fucked up my life really was. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So, did you go through any of that when you were a kid? Absolutely. Um, my mom became the alcoholic after the crack. That was her solution to the crack, was she became a hard alcoholic like she would literally drink two fifths of vodka a day and then her solution to the yeah. vodka because she thought it made her violent was she switched to tequila <laughs> like that was her solution and that's not the solution <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely not like she would carry one of them 62 ounce thirst buster circle k cups full of blue kool-aid and tequila man she was gangster in that shit <laughs> all day every day man like 
I don't remember her seeing her without that cup. She would go to work with it. Everywhere she went, she had this cup with her. And I don't, I just, I don't know how she functioned in life, but she did. I mean, but it, I mean, it was terrible. Like you were mentioning in your video about your childhood of seeing your mom just wasted and like the nights of having to pick my mom up off the floor when she done peed herself and, and stuff like that. And like I told you, the whole, for some reason, everywhere we moved, nobody liked my mother. Like she was always the shit starter in the neighborhood. And, and it, was, it was just insane. Like I was always embarrassed about anywhere I went because you didn't know what she was going to do. I didn't know what she was going to do. And she told, they totally weren't supportive. Like anytime something happened, it was, I was automatically wrong. They automatically believed that I was wrong. Like, so I was just doomed from the jump. So by know? her bullshit, you kind of got wrapped into that and you kind of, her bad name became your bad name kind of. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, but not really, because people were like, you know, they liked me. I was a good kid. I've always had a sense of humor, you know, luckily. And I, I didn't, somebody, my dad's friend told me once, he said, if you want to be a decent person when you grow up, it's real simple. Just do the opposite of what your mom does. <laughs> yeah, like, I think I've heard that a lot, too. <laughs> and, and it's really served me well throughout my life. Like, just, think, you know, seeing how my mom was to people. So I've been the opposite. You told me the other day you think I might be a good dad because of what I've gone through in my life, Facts, and that's yeah. absolutely what it is. You know, I know exactly what not to do. I know the pain that it causes. Yeah, there's usually so. two roads somebody like us goes through. You know, we I didn't have my dad. You didn't really have your dad. Mom was on drugs. You either grow up and you start having kids and you're that exact same person, or you're totally different because you know what that felt like when you were a kid and you don't want to do that to your kid. Absolutely. I think that's where you're on the B road. You know what I'm saying? In <laughs> Thank life. God. Yeah. Thank God. Real. You know, and, and, but yeah, so, I mean, it, it was just insane. Um, my mom, when they moved back, my mom moved back down here. My dad took that as they're going to get back together. So he was all hunky dory and on top of the moon. And I'm like, miserable because she's here because we just gone through six months of hell of her like i said putting a chain on the refrigerator so we can't eat like or there there was a padlock on their bedroom door on the so nobody could go in there when they were gone and so they she would, she literally put a chain around the refrigerator door put a chain around the refrigerator and david you can vouch for this he he's one of my friends he'll, he'll comment on this um, he's actually the one that told me that my mom was smoking crack, but she put a chain on him for that all came because her boyfriend was diabetic and I guess he had a Snickers bar or something in there that I'm sure I ate. Um, I could blame it on my brother, but I'm sure it was me. Uh, and so their solution to that was, okay, you little bastards won't be able to get in the refrigerator. So they literally put a chain and a padlock on the refrigerator. They had, we had a deep freezer with a bunch of food in it. They locked that. And literally the only way we were able to eat, because my mom, if she wasn't, if she was home, she was locked in her room. We weren't allowed to go up there and bother them. So we would literally have to pry the edge of the freezer That's open nuts, and reach in there and grab a hot dog or two and pull them out. And then we had these dry freezer burnt buns that we would heat up and eat hot dog subs. My brother would not eat hot dogs his adult life ever. When you say that, it's crazy because you're the son, you know what I'm saying? But she's putting the fridge around the chain around the fridge so you won't eat the boyfriend's food. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's that that's what I hear when you tell me that. And you that's know what I'm saying? that's what I heard as a child. And it, it was a recurring theme with her, like yeah. the recurring boyfriends. It was always whatever they wanted. She would drop everything for the man she was with. And she told me, like I asked her as an adult when I finally got to talk to her in my late thirties. You know, because she finally gave me a chance to sit down and talk to her and be honest and, and rest in peace. That I'm glad she did that. Yeah. You know, I finally got that. And did that's when I introduced her. Your chest? Yeah. That's when I introduced her to my daughter when I was like, look, you've given me what I finally needed, an honest yeah. conversation. You didn't lie Closure. or duck anything. Yeah, because there was a time where I didn't see my mom for 20 years. And I lived here in Tampa and she was in Moon Lake the whole time. But it was just yeah. like, we didn't speak. And I went out there one time with a buddy of mine, and I was, you know, like, I feel like a piece of crap. I don't even know if my own mother's alive or dead. I haven't bothered to check. Like, let me at least check. So I drove out there to check on her, and um, 
I left my phone number because she was at work, and then she never called back. So I just assumed it was her husband at the time didn't give her my number because me and him didn't like each other. Yeah. And then during this conversation I had with her in my 30s, she told me, she's like, no, I got the number. I just wasn't in a state to call you. And, like, that really pissed me off. Like, you know, you had my phone number and still didn't bother to call me. But it didn't surprise me. Like, she would do foul shit like that all the time. I took... She gave me fake paperwork. I had custody of my younger brother from the time he was 14 until he turned 18. And she gave me paperwork that I thought was legit from the courts. And so on my brother's 16th birthday, I take him to go get his driver's license. They come out and put us in handcuffs. Try to say we're pel- pel- uh, passing false paperwork. God, and I'm like, know. what are you talking about? And they're like, well, this paperwork is not from a court. And it actually said in the 6th Judicial Court of Pasco County, everything, it looked legit. Come to find out, she had typed this whole thing up on her own and, and given it to me, and it, it wasn't legit. Like, I got him enrolled in school with that paperwork, everything. So she would do weird, just crazy stuff like that. And then the whole I the whole thing behind him coming to live with me was he was starting to get in trouble in school and not listening, and her husband slapped him. And I'm like, look, I know what he's going slapped through. Slapped your brother? Slapped my brother. Now, my brother is six foot two, three hundred 300 pounds at this time at 16. Like, so he's he was, the wrong motherfucker. Yeah, but my brother didn't do nothing to him because my brother liked him. Like, they actually lived together for quite a while. My brother didn't do anything. He just left it at that. And uh, my brother wasn't a fighter, never was. Like, he was a really nerdy kid. Like, he would, he would be the kid to be inside playing, taking something apart and putting it back together. Like, he was never really out and about at yeah. all. <clears throat> and if he ever got in any crap, then it was, I'd have to come in and, and handle it for him, you yeah. know. So, anyways, her agreement to let him come with live with me was as long as she got to keep his child support, then he could stay with me, which I agreed to. As long as I could get him with me, I didn't care. The money That's didn't matter. That's crazy, though, bro. It That's didn't even occur nuts. to me because I'm so used to her doing stuff like that. Like, she got child support on me from my stepdad and I'm not even his blood son apparently she had lied and told them that he adopted me and I didn't even know that until recently Yeah, you know because I knew she was getting child support for me and I didn't know how it worked and, and for the people watching right now this shit goes on a lot a like lot. what is the odds I have a YouTube channel and I run across somebody that lives in my area and this is the story imagine how many other stories like this are going on in the world right now and like, it's good to talk about this for us, and it's also good for us to get this out because other people can be listening to this, and they're like, Dan, they're telling my story, and then they don't feel so alone, man. And that's really why I'm doing this, like, interview is so people can see, like, bro, you are not the only one going through this shit, and I feel what you're going through, and so does so does he. Yeah, absolutely, and that's exactly why I'm sitting here because, like I told you when we first met, Everybody so far that I've seen on all the channels have all been to prison, and then they got themselves together. And shout out to every last one of you. Salute. Keep it up. But there's also a way that if you get the opportunity to change it before you go to prison, take it, and, yeah. and you know, you won't regret it. Believe me, you know, like, and that's what happened with me. So all that crazy stuff happens with my mom. Um, I end up meeting this girl that was had a really bad drug problem, but... We lived together for a while, and I ended up moving out to Polk County with her and her family. And Polk her, County. Yeah, good old Polk <laughs> County, boy. <laughs> Needless Brady to say. Brady Judd. Yeah, for y'all in Polk County that want to know, I moved directly in between Juanita and Eloise, which are the two worst spots in, in Polk County. Yeah, Probably well, a lot of people watching may not know <laughs> yeah. about uh, old Polk County, but Polk County was the meth capital of the world at one point. It's called the bathtub and, capital, yep. yeah. Yeah, man, and the, the sheriff out there, he don't play no fucking games, and he will lock you up, throw away the key with no evidence. He don't even give a shit. Yep, I got a homeboy that's got a crazy story with him that, you know, I've already told you. But, yeah, that dude's a terror. He's not a good guy, man. He comes off as he is. And, and if he really stood by the stuff he portrays to believe in, I'd be all for him. But, you know, he... He he just he goes gung ho and it's all about making himself look good on camera. It's yeah, not about the he people. arrests people and then he goes on channel ten news at six, and he does nothing but talk shit about the dude that he arrested. Which yeah. I get it. You're arrested. You did something bad, but this dude will just destroy your character, and you're not even convicted yet. You're yeah. just arrested. 
So where did you end up living when you were in Polk County? So originally I, I moved in with my ex-girlfriend and her parents, and then her aunt and uncle lived in a, in a trailer right behind them, so their property's connected. Um, I ended up living with the aunt and uncle because they worked at a hotel, and he was the chef, and she was the front of the house manager of the restaurant, so they right. needed a dishwasher. And I didn't have a job. I didn't have any other prospects. So, of course, I was like, yeah, I guess I'll wash Shit, dishes. I'm living in me. your house. Yeah, I'm living in your house. The least I can do is wash yeah. dishes for you. So they brought me in as a dishwasher. And, like, the first 60 days I worked straight, cause, double shifts, because they didn't have anybody else. And uh, they, the, the uncle came to me one day and was like, hey, man, shout out to Chef Tim. He's like, look, you, you work really hard. You know, he's like, you... I see what your your home life is like. You don't really have many opportunities. He was like, if you want to learn how to cook, I can teach you how to cook. I'm like, dude, I, can, I can't cook water, bro. Like, I'll burn water for real. He was like, it's fine. He was like, just stick with me. Don't give me any bullshit. And I, I promise I'll spend the time with you. And summertime's here in the restaurant business. Is, it's dead. Yeah. Well, so, how long was it when you were in Polk County before you actually, like, came across meth? Cause it's, it was it before was I went to Polk County because I met her in Pasco County. She was actually living in Pasco to get out of Polk because of her past was real bad with meth. Like I said, her grandmother had been doing it for 20 years. and Damn. So she, I met her in Pasco County. I met her when I got out of my juvenile program. and um, I never met a methed out granny, man. Me neither. And so, <laughs> she wasn't on it. She didn't do it. She only sold it. Like I, oh, she, she didn't wasn't do on it, it for 20 years? She no, was she was it? selling it. Oh, her whole family was on it, and that, that's what I don't understand. How do you allow your grandchildren to be in your house shooting meth? Like, yeah, that's a do you under, do you, do you hear what I just said? How do you allow your grandchildren to be in your house shooting meth? Like, and yeah, that's it's Polk definitely County. Definitely a family disease. Bro. That's Polk County. Unfortunately, there's a lot. I mean, not just Polk County. It, it's all it's all over the place. But I mean, that's what I was seeing, and it it it, it shocked me. Like. The, the drug addiction in Baltimore, I wasn't old enough to really see it. And then when I got older, I was like, oh, that's why that guy used to twist his cigarette on the end. Or that's why that guy was doing this on the corner. Like, I yeah. got it. But seeing Polk County was a whole different world, man. Like, and just, they, they, it was insane. What like, was the craziest thing you think you saw when you were living in Polk? The crazy